Yumba, which means hello in Ngunnawal. For those of you that don't know me, I am Caroline Hughes, director of CIT's Urana Centre, the centre of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander excellence at Canberra Institute of Technology. I am also one of many Ngunnawal elders that have the cultural privilege and right to provide welcome to country on behalf of our Ngunnawal community. Before I go further, I would like to acknowledge other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that may be watching this film. And I also pay respect to your elders, both past and present, and emerging leaders. I also acknowledge you, our many non-Indigenous friends, that are also watching this film. And I pay respect to you and your ancestors. Providing welcome to country is an important tradition that all Australians should participate in. So in the words of my ancestors, Yuma Yumalundi, Nanayirubi Krulili Manangai, which means hello and welcome to Nanawal country. Or in other words, you may leave your footprints on our land. Thank you. Welcome to the fourth and final episode of Pressure Cooker. Over the course of the series, we've seen our student chefs rise to the challenge with impressive feats of culinary skill. With just one episode to go, there is everything still to fight for. Will Chef Yvonne secure the final point? Or will Chef Brad impress the judges and force a tie? Stay tuned to find out. You're watching Pressure Cooker. Chef Yvonne is ready for battle with her team, Olivia and Matt. Yeah, looking forward to getting back into the kitchen this week. Thirsty for victory, with Chef Brad, we have Maria and Aidan. We're going to have fun anyway. Who's going to win or lose? Oh, I don't know if your captains will be happy to hear that. <laughs> As they head off to the kitchen, let's see what Brad and Yvonne found at the Capital Region Farmers Market. What started out as a small market with only 15 stalls back in 2004 has now grown to over 200 registered stallholders and 100 stalls every Saturday at Exhibition Park in Canberra. How can I help you? We're after some eye filler today. Okay. Right, well, I've got some lovely eye filler. Uh, Galloway eye filler was packed on Thursday. Uh, you'll find that lovely and sweet and juicy, just like the, all the Galloway beef. Brad and Yvonne have chosen eye fillet from Minto Galloway's farm. But the question is, will it work with the theme? So today's theme is fine dining. Well, this will be interesting. Eye fillet and fine dining. What will Brad and Yvonne create to impress the judges this week? While Brad and Yvonne brief their teams, let's meet the judges. Anurag is the executive chef of the Southern Cross Club. He's joined by our returning judge, Shelley, who's the head of culinary at CIT. And finally, we have Fiona, who's the director of business, tourism, and accounting at CIT. Now that we've met the judges, Let's head to the kitchen to find out what our two teams are up to. So today we've got eye fillet, it's fine dining. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to get the eye fillet, get some uh, thyme, um, olive oil, bag it and then pop it in the sous vide. Okay, so even though it's, it's super soft anyway, then we can guarantee it's, they're all cooked the same. When it comes out, we'll um, just sear it in a pan, get a little bit of colour on there and serve it. So we'll roast some of these shallots. Um, and film a little bit of parsley off. Yvonne had a very clear idea of how she wanted uh, the meals plated. You know, when you're looking at a blank plate, it's an idea to sort of treat it like a blank canvas. And it's the food that you're putting on there is, you know, you need to think about the colours, you need to think about the shapes and how it all comes together. Two pots to serve it, so only two dishes today, easy. It's the last one, the last hurrah, so it'll be good fun. We're both cooking with similar ingredients today, different takes on the same dish, so it'll be good. Guys, so today, I feel it. I so, yeah, fine dining. I feel it, uh, okay. Back when I was an apprentice, there was a lot more, I suppose, fine dining restaurants, not as many cafes, coffee culture wasn't huge. Mr. Galloway's for supplied us with the beef, so now I fill it a little coffee rub, and then we'll uh, sous vide, oh, a little sous vide machine with a little bit of truffle butter, and then for entree, we'll do a classic consomme, oh, a little bit of truffle and stuff like that, so 
So they're the things that we need to do, and we need to do the quenelle. So what I want you first to do is we're going to classic garnish, so we need to turn potatoes. Sounds good. So let's go. Yep. yep. All right? Sure. So we'll start on the consomme first. You grab the potato. All right, so let's go. Let's get started on you, you're going to make a pasta dough, Mark? Yeah. Yep. You're going to make consomme? Yep. Yeah, we worked really well as a team today, I thought. There was no stress or, you know, pressure to get the dishes up. We had the time to play it up and think about what we're doing, so pretty happy with that. Two whites. Um, we'll do two whites separately so that we can put one in the mousse. Do you want the egg whites going for a little bit just by themselves? No, nah, that's cool. Just just got to wash my hands after this so I don't kill the judges with salmonella. Yep. And I'll show you how to cut this. Yep. The way we cook in our country, in my country, um, has a lot of influence on how I'm cooking here. Yes, thank you. Okay, because we're going to cut out, I fill it a little bit smaller. Peel them first? No. Mm. Okay. Yeah, two more yolks and four eggs. Yeah. Wasn't it six yolks? I thought it was... Four eggs, six yolks. Yeah, yeah. it's four there. All right, I'll crack one. We were pretty comfortable with what, with what we're doing. We've, most of the techniques we've used, I've done before. Yeah, for fine dining, it was um, all still pretty familiar territory. Yeah, it's a bit funny shaped. And then if you want to go in the back then, that'd be great. Yeah, a bit of olive oil. Oh, yep. When I was an apprentice, yeah, the chef, he didn't like me very much. Well, he did, but he said, I'm going to teach you how to do turn potatoes, yeah? So he gave me a 50 kilo bag of potatoes. <laughs> and and said, turn in? potatoes. And then I turned up the next day and I said, chef, where's all my potatoes? And he pointed over to the side and he goes, that stock pot, they're in there. This is not as easy as it looks. I just know that this is like um, a very traditional way to cutting potatoes and it comes from France. Now that the teams are organised, let's find out more about our industry judge, Anurag. Yeah, hi, my name is Anurag. I'm the group executive chef for Southern Cross Club. I've grown up in a few countries. I spent a lot of time in England, Australia, and a lot of countries in Asia. For me, working in the team is probably the best part of being a chef. Yes, we do have our up days, down days, some days not everybody is firing on their full cylinders, and I, I love it. Managing team, if you've got good people, you don't manage. After a hard day's work, for me, outdoors is the best way of walking my dogs, just going for a long solitude walk, or just being out in the country. In the pressure cooker show you guys are done, it's, I, I think it's a brilliant idea, especially from CID point of view, where you've got all the different streams working together. And hopefully people will say, hang on, we've got talent in town and we can do a lot of things. And they take it positively and you guys get bigger and stronger from there. Because we used to have a lot of apprentices who went through CID. And I know a lot of teachers and I've even taught their cooking. They've got a good setup, and I think all the businesses should support them. And, and that's what we do as a club. And I take pride in the CRD, what it does. Another important thing is small things that you never take into account. So for example, I was using another pan for my Brussels sprouts, but then I need to use a heavier one. Otherwise, the sprouts are going to cook really, really fast, and then I can burn them. When I came here, I opened my mind into Asian food because that's not very common in South America. So for me, this was like a new world. But it's been really interesting because now I get to compare ingredients, flavors. And that's coming. such a classic, classic yeah. principle, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. You have to do three screw one, two, three. That's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 If you end the four, you've got it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he looks quite confident, his elbows mm. are mm. locked. Uh, yeah. So our carrots are ready. Oh, I'm yeah. going to use olive oil and a little bit of butter. So we're just um, just checking the CV, just checking the beef in the CV machine. Just needs a little bit longer, probably about another 10 minutes. 
the hardest thing, how do you define Australian cuisine? We're not like Europe or the Americas where they've got hundreds and hundreds of years of tradition. So back in the 60s when we started to get an influence of Italian and Greeks and everything like that and they came in and they changed. So the multiculturalism of Australia is just, we're a blend of everything. That is exciting in itself. I can start putting my carrots. We're going to strain our consomme now. Turn the top on. The question how strong the flavour may be in the yeah. finished product. For me, I'm a bit of a traditionalist. Yes. Last week we learnt about Olivia and Aidan. This week we'll get to know their comrades, Matt and Maria. So my name's Matt Feely, I'm 23 and I've been studying here for about a year now. I used to be an architecture student, didn't really know what I wanted to do at the stage. I've always been into cooking. It was my part-time job while going through uni and then sort of slowly fell in love with sort of the, the pace of the kitchen and just how intense it can be sometimes. We do a lot of functions at the Arboretum. There's pretty heavy emphasis on plating. But in five years I want to learn as much as I can and then sort of go from there. I'm really into European cooking. Like a big thing about being a chef, I think it opens opportunities for travelling and sort of getting, you can get a job anywhere really. So the things I thought I was going to get out of pressure cooker was just more experience in the kitchen and working with sort of a different group of people because I've only worked in the one kitchen and sort of get, getting out of my comfort zone. I think that was a big thing for me because I knew Yvonne was always good to work with. So, Hi, my name is Maria. I was born in Bogota, Colombia. When I used to live in Colombia, I, I used to be a lawyer. I studied for five years. I got my, well, my degree, my, my law degree. I wasn't feeling really happy anymore about what I was doing. I mean, I really, I chose being a lawyer because I wanted to and I really enjoyed it at the beginning. I used to work with victims when I was back, back home. And I think it was a lot of pressure for me. I decided that I needed to do something different, like just for fun during the weekends. I've always said that my mom is my hero. Um, I don't know, she just, she always encouraged me to do new things. So when I told her that I wanted to, you know, study uh, pastry, that I wanted to move here, and that I wanted to start a new life, she always encouraged me, she always uh, pushes me to to, to pursue my happiness, you know? She's always like, do whatever you want, do whatever you need, do whatever you need, you need to make you happy. So definitely she's like the biggest influence in my life. One of the reasons I think uh, makes me a good pastry chef, it's, be, it's being accurate. I'm really, really accurate. Um, at the same time, I really like to, to try new things. So I like to be creative. for the sauce. So, yeah. finely melted. It's like a nice, um, free range egg yeah, pasta it's there. Yellow, it's it? got yeah. really good color. So this is a pasta machine, mm -hmm. um, but it's an electric pasta machine. So gone are the... For electric <laughs> pasta. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to wind it by hand anymore. It's an electric one, so. That's fine when you're doing a few portions to do yeah. it manually, but when you're doing bulk, it's uh, mm -hmm. it's an asset to have one of those in your That's kitchen. That's for sure. Smell of shuffles is lovely. That looks like Yvonne's making ravioli. Ah, uh, yes. Well, that'll be interesting. Not too, not too tall. Yeah. Otherwise it won't cook. So I'm just spooning out chicken mixture. It's got a bit of parsley, chicken mince, and some truffle. That's, that's a little bit yeah. like the spoon is not as consistent perhaps no. as other, other ways of doing that. And just those ones are peeled and in half. Yeah. So it looks like uh, Yvonne has some shallots there that she's yeah. peeling. They're once again quite a classic ingredient, aren't they? Yeah, that's we right. Use them in a lot of cooking, except for classic dishes. Maybe we could lay it in the bowl and then tell the waiters to pour the consomme on there. I've got teapots. Yeah. yeah. So we'll set up the plates, all beautiful, and then... The garnish and the... Yeah. yeah. And the communication is, really, is really yeah. good, really effective, isn't it? Yeah. She may be the Director of Business, Tourism and Accounting at CIT, but our judge for today, Fiona, has had an illustrious career in hospitality, 
Let's find out more. My name's Fiona Mitchell and I'm the College Director for CIT's Business, Tourism and Accounting College. My background is from the commercial cookery streams and from there I was able to then uh, explore the opportunity to um, develop and create and open our own regional restaurant and a regional ice cream business and to work with some of the large wineries of the Yarra Valley. So our focus was uh, supporting local growers. Growing up in Glen Waverley and Willis Hill even though it was a suburb, my mum and dad always made sure we had our own kitchen garden. So very little was bought in, there was no convenience food. So uh, just having that appreciation of um, locally sourced product really got my interest going. I consider culinary to be a perfect example of uh, art. It's also about connecting as a chef uh, the story, you're sort of the conduit if you like. My interest in wine has certainly come about through my experience as a chef. Australia has some outstanding wines, as does the rest of the world, and that really, really interests me. I was really fortunate to be nominated as Yarra Valley Chef of the Year some time back. I was also awarded Most Inspirational Teacher of the Year. I try and take the time out to share my skills and knowledge wherever I can, and I think some of the acknowledgements that I've had have sort of established that, yes, I am a mentor. Just 10 minutes to go. Oh, is the ravioli sticking a little it's there, perhaps? Oh dear, and they have to be really careful because pending what they're using the ravioli for, yeah. you know, they don't want that excess flour or yeah. on the plate. When I make a chicken canal, the shape like a semi-round, I'm really happy with the shape. This is a soup eat eye flat with a truffle butter. Wow, it smells good. And this can wait here for consomme. The consomme can just be a, a fairly tricky dish to do. You've got to be extra careful when you're ladling it or pouring it out that you don't break the raft. But if that breaks, your whole thing goes cloudy, which you don't want that, you want to clear. She must be feeling fairly confident with Matt yeah. to let him do this, <laughs> don't you think? That's oh, a great learning exercise, yeah. isn't it? Oh, there's a few things that um, I've cooked that have not come off as you expect. There's no real standouts for never wanting to cook them again, but there's certainly a few where you kind of go back to the drawing board and work out how to do things differently. When I'm in the kitchen, I'm not really thinking about whether or not I'm winning or losing. I'm thinking about sort of the, the task at hand and am I doing that particular job or that particular dish to the best of my abilities right in that moment. It's not until the dishes are gone and you realise, oh, they've gone off to the judges. And that's only when I start thinking about whether or not it's a win or lose situation. Ah, it's a little teapot, I see. That's a nice touch, isn't it? Again, just a little element of surprise, I guess. Mm. Yeah, it's That's interesting, isn't it? Yvonne's now catching up. OK, now we're approaching the final moments of the entire competition. Four weeks and it's come down to this. Will the teams make their dishes in time? Yeah. Where's the Ten. End? Nine. Let's get another couple eight, of plates. Seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. The time has come to see what the judges think of Brad and Yvonne's efforts. First up, we have Brad's consomme. That, that is good consomme. Mm. That is good. The garnish needs to be like perfectly cut. That's right. You know, it's a that, little random. Yeah, it's a little random, isn't it? And also, I'm getting a sense of rawness. Mm. I'd like to see that the my garnish crunch. was, yeah. yeah, was blanched, yeah. especially for something as powerful as leek or, yeah, that's you know, powerful. onion. The eye fillet from Minto Galloway's oh. farm. Yeah, you didn't get any, shall <laughs> Did you get turned? What? No. <laughs> you didn't get any. <laughs> No. Would you like one of mine, Charlie? Yeah, oh, my. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, <laughs> That's That's a, a terrible mistake, isn't it? <laughs> Someone who's forgotten. Consistency has got to be there. Let's see how Yvonne's team's gone in plating up. 
it needs a whole lot more seasoning, yeah, doesn't it's, it? It's underwhelmed. The time has come for the final dish of the series. This is old school. The Which is fondant, a shame. So a little bit flat. Flat yeah. flavour. Yeah. They haven't sat in the stock for a long time, so they no, haven't soaked in. Soaked in as much. Yeah. Quite a turnaround this week. Yeah. I think we're all agreed today. Yeah. Team Brad, really loved your consomme and the depth of flavour and the seasoning in that particular dish. Your quenelle was very, very appealing in texture and flavour. And certainly I would have perhaps liked a little bit more detail around the technique used in the garnish, making sure our knife precision cuts were as they should be and certainly blanching those first. Brad, I also think that you did very well today. The consomme had a really nice flavour. Cloche got lifted, your consomme was singing. Just like with the old school consomme and the classical consomme, the quenelle was good. My only critic would be the temperature. The main course was delicious, beautifully seasoned, great skill applied to each and every one of the components on the dish. Loved the crispy elements of the little Brussels sprout leaves, that was lovely. Would have probably liked a little bit more caramelisation and flavour in your fondant potatoes, but overall a really great dish, well done. The beef dish looked beautiful, so well done on your plating, guys. Um, it looked really nice and it did taste really good as well. I really enjoyed it, I would happily pay for that plate in a restaurant. My only critique in that would be, your fondos could have cooked a little more and a little more salt in the beef. And I didn't actually get any fondant potatoes. We missed um, some potatoes in one dish. I think he wanted to kill us. He looked at me like, I thought I asked you. I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> Fiona, how do you think Yvonne went? Team Yvonne, a really good effort today. Love the way you were working in the kitchen and you really were communicating quite, quite well together. I found your consomme a little bit flat. It didn't have the intensity that Brad's team did. Certainly I found the, the pasta a little bit tough, so that would indicate to me maybe it was a little bit overworked. But all in all, a really good effort. Thank you. I got a fondant potato, which was good. <laughs> <laughs> um, the consomme was good. I think it could have done with a bit more depth of flavour as well. My main issue with the consomme was how to eat it with a spoon. The raviolo was quite large and it's a little bit hard to eat those things with a spoon, but otherwise you did a good job. Consomme, I loved the presentation, the way it came in, but well, that's where it ended for me. The plate looked nice, the broth didn't have any body. The truffles were good in there. The flavour profile of truffles was a lot better. The beef, it was only seared on one side. I, I don't think that was a justice to a prime cut of beef. Yeah. Uh, well, we've heard the judges' comments on each of the dishes. Now, Shelley, could you tell us the final score? So the final score today, Yvonne's team. 37. Brad's team. 48 and a half. 48 and a half, congratulations. Congratulations Team Brad and Team Yvonne. Thank you to our judges. Yeah, well, the students did well. Uh, obviously there was some feedback, so there some things for us to work on for next time. Uh, we didn't get the win today, but you know, we uh, put in a lot of effort into the kitchen. Both teams put up good dishes and theirs is just better. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> they just work solidly and yeah, it was a, just a team effort. It was a bit of banter between me and Yvonne and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was a nice day in the kitchen. So, yeah, so enjoyable. That means that our series ended up being levelled at two all. We would have liked to rig it that way, but unfortunately it's happened that way naturally. Congratulations to all of our contestants in a very fiercely fought pressure cooker. We will be back in 2019. Thanks so much for watching.